What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again, and today I'm bringing you the hash rate review for the Gigabyte RTX 3050 Gaming Overclock Edition. Now, this card came out yesterday on January 27th, 2022, and I got the testing done as quickly as possible. So, while there may be, of course, little fewer tweaks that you could make to get better hash rate, I did go ahead and go from the basis of attempting overclocks, at least mo mild overclocks on this particular GPU for all of these tests. We'll get into it right after a word from today's sponsor. Prime XBT is an established trading platform that was founded in 2018. Through February 8th, there are no fees for buying crypto with a card. Prime XBT offers a unique trading experience with their co-vesting module that allows you to follow successful traders. Their latest feature is co-vesting yield accounts that offers up to 14% APY using DeFi and CeFi integration. Prime XBT is available on desktop as well as their new iOS app. Remember, any form of investing comes with significant risks, so do your own research. A quick disclaimer, when using leverage trading, it comes with extremely high risks, including loss of all funds. Use promo code SONOFATECH at sign up for up to $7,000 in bonuses. Welcome back. A note on today's sponsor is we had paused on the sponsorship with Prime XBT. And part of that was I wasn't certain about how I wanted to approach disclaimers for specific sponsors. Anything that basically has leverage involved or futures involved because these different styles of trading can be a lot riskier than others. So I just want to put a word of warning out there. If you do get into Prime XBT in particular, make sure you do a lot of research because you need to make sure that your investment is going to be sound. All right, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and hop into the specifications for this GPU. And as you can see here, we're on the official Gigabyte website. It's gonna be the GeForce RTX 3050 Gaming Overclock Edition with eight gigabytes of GDDR6. It is at 1822 megahertz on the core, which is quite a bit more, I guess, than the reference card of 1777 megahertz on the core. You have 2560 CUDA cores and a memory clock of 14,000 megahertz. The memory size is eight gigabytes as previously mentioned of GDDR6 and that is gonna be across a 128 bit memory bus totaling 224 gigabytes a second of memory bandwidth. It does run on PCI Express 4.0. However, as opposed to the RX 6500 XT, there is no performance degradation when going down to PCI Express 3.0, at least for the most part. That being said, of course, for mining, we aren't really concerned about this because we will already be running and doing all of the tests on a riser that goes through a buy one PCI Express adapter. The card size is 282 millimeters by 117 millimeters by 41 millimeters and it is all powered by a single eight pin PCI adapter and the recommended power supply is 450 watts. In the case of mining, I never saw an algorithm take more than 140 watts from the wall. The testing methodology is running a single riser to the a separated power supply from the system. And then that power supply also supplies power to the GPU itself through the eight pin. And that is basically all within its own ecosystem plugged into a kilowatt. The power supply is going to be a gold rated EVGA power supply. It's 750 watts. And the important note about that is that your maximum efficiency will be at under 50% load, and that maximum efficiency would total out to 84%. So that's where these calculations come from. That's why you will see higher reporting of the power compared to, of course, what you may see in software or in your software. Now, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the nitty gritty. We'll start things off with Ethereum, of course, or ET hash in general. So these numbers will go across all ET hash cards. And basically with the overclock, what we're looking at was a max overclock of plus 1500 megahertz within MSI Afterburner. I did go ahead and turn the power limiter down to 76%, which is the most you could turn it down within the overclocking software 
on this particular GPU. Interestingly enough, it didn't seem to impact the power draw uh, whatsoever. So at this point, it seems like essentially whatever the card is going to pull, at least in the case of Ethereum, it's going to pull that amount of power. And it's not that efficient if we're being honest. Taking a look at Ethereum, we ended up with basically 13.69 mega hash a second at 90 watts. And this was using LOL miner. And that's because this GPU is a light hash rate GPU, meaning that you will need to use a light hash rate unlocking miner and that could be anything from lol miner to nb miner and a few others so we went ahead and did the lol miner version 1.42 and these were the results now it's been highly requested to be testing crypto night gpu or cn gpu recently and i'm trying to do my best to oblige unfortunately sometimes when you take a look at this algorithm in particular the miners are outdated or pretty outdated in general the miner that we did go with of course was xmr stack and i think the last update was actually in 2019. That being said, it did perform admirably at 1550 hash a second at 90 watts, and that was with the same overclock settings that we had on Ethereum. The next coin we went ahead and took a look at was Autolikos, or the algorithm I should say, and it was basically the same old story as far as power consumption and overclocks as both Ethereum and Kryptonite. We were at 40 mega hash a second with those results at 90 watts. So when I was editing the video, I realized that essentially we had the wrong inputs for Octopus in particular. And essentially what we ended up with on the Octopus algorithm was the plus 1500 megahertz on the memory overclock and it ended up showing 26 mega hash a second at 110 watts. The rest of these coins except for the final one did consume the most power at 140 watts and the coin we're going to start that off with an algorithm is going to be flux on the Zell hash algorithm. Unfortunately the results were not as good as we would like to see and it was at 22 hash a second or solutions a second at 140 watts so it's pulling a lot of power from the wall and it's not getting that great of a hash rate either this was what i was hoping to be the saving grace for this particular gpu unfortunately it ends up not being the case we did take a look at ravencoin and it once again has that high power draw now on both of these coins the flux and of course the kapow i would be amiss if i didn't mention the differences in overclocks and the thing is is it does have some benefit from a core overclock i went ahead and did a plus 200 megahertz overclock on both flux as well as ravencoin and basically if we went above that to 250 megahertz we started having reliability issues now we kept the memory overclock at plus 1500 megahertz and that's basically for good reason because you still do get a benefit on these particular algorithms from that. In the case of Ravencoin, this resulted in 12.43 mega hash a second at 140 watts. Next, we took a look at Firo, and that is Firo Proof of Work, and it results basically the same as Ravencoin. You're looking at 12.43 mega hash a second at 100 and 40 watts. We also took a look at Vertcoin and with Vertcoin, unfortunately, I was not able to get really solid power readings because I needed to plug it directly into the motherboard, primarily because we had to use the Vertcoin one-click miner for the full mining potential as CC miner was not really giving that to us. And what it resulted in was 264 kilohash a second at 80 watts best I could tell. It was the most power efficient algorithm out of the bunch. However, it doesn't seem like it's going to be enough to make up for the profitability. Taking a look at Ton, which has about 200 days left on it, we did go ahead and throw it on there. And the only difference in overclocks here is we took off the memory overclock because it does not impact the performance. And then we basically added the core clock boost of plus 200 megahertz. This resulted in a power consumption of 140 watts once again because of that core overclock 
and that was at 1.4 giga hash a second. So let's go ahead and get into profitability for, of course, the RTX 3050, according to what to mine. Okie dokie, so as you can see, we have everything queued in here, and on top of the charts is going to be Rio currency at 85 cents a day after power, if your power is 10 cents a kilowatt hour. Now, an important note about Rio in particular is that it is a single dev, and really there hasn't been much activity in quite some time on the GitHub or for the miners. If you're not aware, Fire Ice UK forked this coin from a coin called Sumo Coin and basically also helped create the algorithm Crypto Knight GPU. Unfortunately, this is going to be a problem for liquidation and possible longevity of that particular coin. And I also have some questions about other coins that utilize this algorithm, seeing as it is not heavily supported by the original creator. And that other coin here is going to be Equilibria at XEQ. And that one is at 74 cents a day after power at 10 cents a kilowatt hour. Coming in after that, of course, with the updated numbers for Conflux, which is the Octopus algorithm, that one performs the best out of pretty much known and active coins at 45 cents a day af uh, after power costs if we don't take into account, of course, conceal here, which is at 47 cents a day after power costs. Bumping down from there, you end up with Ravencoin at 30 cents a day after power. Firo right behind that, which is essentially kind of the same performance level at 29 cents a day after power. And unfortunately, Flux falls down pretty far behind at 26 cents a day after power. I was hoping it was going to be the savior for the RTX 3050. However, that doesn't appear to be the case. Surprisingly, Ethereum is very far down the list at 29 cents a day after power. However, because it does use less power than most of the other algorithms, it is beating out Firo and Flux as well. Then we have Ergo down here on the Auto Lycos algorithm doing 19 cents a day after power and Ethereum Classic at 8 cents a day after power. And it just keeps getting worse after that. Vertcoin at the very bottom of the list at 2 cents a day after power. And then everything else below that that are ETH hash coins are going to be mining at a loss at 10 cents a kilowatt hour. So keep in mind that's going to be a problem. We do have to mention, of course, Ton, and that was basically doing 63 cents a day after power, making it pretty much the best bet uh, to mine right now. But you need to keep in mind that there's only a couple hundred days left to mine it, and that's basically going to drain the rest of the proof of work contracts, the giver contracts, and then it won't be mineable anymore. So it's really hard to calculate ROI based off of that in particular. At the end of the day, what my thoughts are on the RTX 3050 is while it is not very good for mining or gaming in general, it is better at the entry level than the RX 6500 XT. If I had to choose between the RX 6500 XT or the RTX 3050, I would go for the RTX 3050. That being said, it does come at a price premium over the RX 6500 XT on both the new market and the secondhand market or the scalper market, however you want to look at it. And you are going to have a hard time finding one in general. I would by no means even consider purchasing this GPU even at the inflated retail prices. This particular one costs 370 US dollars directly from Micro Center and it's just not worth it. It's not worth it for gaming, it's not really worth it for mining. And unfortunately, we just have another bum entry in the entry level GPU market or sub entry level GPU market. I hope that we start seeing some better releases from both Nvidia and AMD as, as far as the GPU lines go. 
And I do think we will continue to see declining prices in GPUs at least through the month of March. If you found this video helpful, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe down below and hit that notification bell. Utilize my affiliate links for any of the sponsors so they are aware that we are providing value to them as a community. And together we will keep calm and mine on. Yes, that t-shirt is down below too. All plugs done, I'll see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to hit the subscribe button for more or check out this playlist for more crypto content related topics.